Hello again. As I'm sure we all know, hosepipe bans have been instituted in some areas in this country and are about to, introduced, to be introduced in others, including the areas supplied by Thames Water. This will of course be an absolute godsend for all those busybodies who had such fun during the Covid epidemic, ringing the police to report that their neighbours have been going for too many walks or having a barbecue in the back garden and so on. These people are now being officially encouraged to ring up and report their neighbours again, this time for watering their lawns and flower beds. It will be virtuous to do such a thing because this will be part of the fight against the climate emergency, of course. It does rather look as though we're running out of water. This is a bit odd. Obviously it hasn't rained for a while, but the dry spell we're experiencing is nothing unusual. We are of course assured that it all has something to do with global warming or climate change, but that's complete nonsense. The story is that because of global warming there is less rain and more hot spells, and this is why all the reservoirs are running dry. A look though at the historical record should soon set our minds at rest on that score. In the description to this video I give a link to UK climate records including the annual rainfall going back to 1766. This record is summed up in a single sentence on page 13 when we are informed that there is no discernible trend in annual mean England and Wales precipitation. In other words, the annual rainfall in England and Wales has not changed noticeably since the time of the Industrial Revolution, over 250 years ago. Well, that's reassuring. Examining the figures, though, shows that there was more rain in some years than others, and if we combine this by looking at the records for South East England, we find something very curious indeed. Between 1920 and 1950, there were five years when the rainfall in South East England was lower than it was in the first seven months of this year. And yet now we have a crisis which will lead to hosepipe bans and rationing if we're not careful. None of that happened in those years between 1920 and 1950, the five years when we had even less rain from January to July than we did this year. Strange, no? As a matter of fact, more rain has been falling in South East England in recent years than ever before. Between 1873 and 1970, there was an average of 375 millimetres. Since the year 2000, though, this has risen 7% to 400 millimetres a year. So why is there now a sense of emergency which we have not previously seen? Here's a clue. In 1950, the population of the United Kingdom was around 50 million. By 2021, it had risen by a third to 67 million. The population of London was 7 million or so in the year 2000, and now it's around 9 million. That's an increase in population of the city of 25% in a little over 20 years. Part of this growth in population is natural increase, that is to say the excess of births over deaths, but the greater part is caused by immigration. Even the natural increase in population is driven indirectly by immigration. The reason for this is of course that many Muslims have far more children per couple than British people tend to. At many schools in London, white English pupils are in a minority. This is just one more of those predictable problems caused by unrestricted immigration, which nobody likes to talk about. It's much better to try and tie it in with climate change and pretend that scrapping our cars and getting rid of our gas cookers will solve the problem and make it rain more often. It will not. The Industrial Revolution, as I showed earlier, has made no difference at all to rainfall in this country. We're facing a problem caused directly by increasing the population by very large numbers 
without thinking beforehand how we might cope with such unprecedented increase in the number of people in the country who will all want water for cooking, to have showers and to flush the lavatory. Did this honestly not occur to those who opened the country up to large-scale immigration? If so, then they must have been either enormously stupid, willfully malicious or criminally negligent, or possibly a combination of all three.